What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Power Play with CJ. Today we're going to preview the big BCBU uh, home and home series, Battle of Combat. Uh, but BC is no more team in hockey, he's no more team in the country at uh, at 10 and 1. And you know the puck possession game they play, you can, you can really see why I had the chance to watch them play a couple weeks ago. And uh, you know guys like Gaudreau and uh, you know Kevin Hayes, guys that really can possess the puck. Whitney, Mullane, uh, just hold the puck, hold the puck, hold the puck, and then you'll make a few passes, and then you know you get they you get dizzy with it. Doing all that, I, you know, they're hard to defend. And BU's, you know, been up and down. They're seven and four. The four losses. I mean, two losses to UNH, who's having a hell of a year. Uh, one loss to BC uh, a couple weeks ago, and then the other loss was to North Dakota out uh, out there. And they split with them. So I mean, that the four losses are you know, nothing to be ashamed of. But uh, you know, the the production of BU's been kind of um, they've been getting scored, but not on a consistent basis from the same guys they did last year. Uh, Matt Nieto and Sahara Gill were great as sophomores and both you know good hockey players, good kids. They were, had outstanding years last year and they, they haven't really played that level. And I think, you know, you got some guys stepping up, taking some minutes. But uh, if they can get to that level they were last year with the guys that have stepped up so far this year, some sophomores that really um, emerged, you know, Cason Holman and uh, Evan Rodriguez really having good years. And then the freshman class has been outstanding. I mean, I'm very pleasantly surprised with what I've seen. Uh, if Sam Kirker can continue bringing the physical game and adding some offense, I mean, you know, Danny Regan's been arguably their most consistent forward. And then on the back end, I mean, Matt Grizz looks the most exciting defenseman in Hockey East. You know, Garrett Noonan, uh, big time fan of the show, is still having, is having a pretty good year. He's really, I think, tightened up defensively from, what, from the limited I've seen, which is fine. You know, you, to be a Funk played two-way defense when you got to be able to play both sides of the puck. You know, the offensive numbers really aren't there from last year, but they're not that far off, and I don't think people realize that. You know, you have the great goal totals, but I think the assist numbers are up this year. They are up this year. I don't just think they are. Uh, it's kind of an objective thing, but I'm uh, playing with Matt Grizz, like really working him in. Um, you know, when you got a freshman that's willing to pull spin moves in the defensive zone on the power play, uh, it's pretty cool, and I think that's the shot in the arm they need. You know, he's that real puck move they lost in Klein Denning, and, uh, you know, that's great. You know, so like I said, BU's production coming from a number of different guys, not the same old like they did last year. Because I mean, last year when you lose two centers in the span of four nights, uh, you, you really your top two centers might head. put yourself between a rock and a hard spot. But you know, this year it's been a little more even. But you know, I'd like to see the big guns really step up and have a big breakout series. And I think they can. I think they will. I think tomorrow night, Friday night at Aganis, the home crowd is going to be wild as they always are. Uh, for Matt Nieto to have a big game, look, I'm calling for two goals from him, and uh, Sahar Gill to have a goal and assist, you know, get get back on track, you know, a nice uh, caught four to one win over BC, that'd be awesome. Like I said, I think they they they're on a two-game losing streak against them, go back to the Beanpot Finals last year, that was a real heartbreaker, and um, you know, Garrett Noonan having the two goals in that game, look for him to step up and bring the physical presence to uh, to really keep the BC forwards honest and get in their heads, you know, Gaudreau, uh He's slippery, but by God, he's small. If you can get a piece of him, you can launch him. Now, I'm not, it's not like a bounty thing or anything. Don't, don't, get, don't read too much of it. And then Saturday night at County Forum, I'll look for a good old 3-3 tie. I think that's going to be a good old, old-time old hockey game. Look for uh, Danny are going to get on the scoreboard. Uh, call up Matt Grizzlick for, uh, he got his first collegiate goal against BC, so why not make it a second, too? And then, uh, yeah, say so hey, again, getting another one, so... Gill, Grizzlick, say O'Regan, for Kirker to have an assist, and then for BC, uh, say Gaudreau has two assists, Arnold has a goal, Hayes has one, and uh, Silk with the other one. Put the bottom six in there. So that's what you get. Uh, hopefully, B, you can come out with three or four points this week and really get really get it going and uh, you know go into the break strong. They got a couple more games after that, but for the most part, this is, this is a Super Bowl. This is what you got to worry about, and. Uh, Go out and get it done. It's going to be a great college hockey matchup. If you're in Boston, I highly recommend going to one of the two games. Tickets are easy to get. Um, it's an awesome experience. Both arenas are great places to watch a game. Both fan bases are really enthusiastic. And I can't think of two better college hockey programs in the country than Boston University and Boston College. That's all I got this episode of the Power Play with CJ on the big BCBU uh, series this weekend. Stay tuned for more episodes throughout the season and beyond. Later, guys.